Hello, I'm John Martin from Martin Fish Company here at WBOC's Historic Studio D. You're watching Delmar the Life. Great having Chef John here today, and I tell you what, during the show we smell this on during I the know. show, and by the time we get done, the mouth is watering. So, well, anyway, it's good to have him here today. <laughs> well, during the summer, both a deck and a patio can provide an outdoor extension of your living space. But subtle differences between the two might make one better for your needs than the other. In today's Angie's List report, we sort out the options when it comes to a patio and a deck, so you can decide which one's best for you. Summer is here. A lot of people want to spend it outside. Maybe you're thinking about installing a deck or a patio. Well, you'll want to start by doing your homework. When considering adding a deck or patio, they can be a great way to extend your living space outside and really extend your square footage. But you really need to decide what are you going to use it for and what kind of space do you have available? Something Robert Haddon already figured out. His shrubs took a beating during the winter, so Haddon removed them from his home and put a patio in their place instead. And he quickly learned it wasn't an easy do-it-yourself project. I had the intention of putting it, putting it in myself, but as I quickly learned, um, just carving a, an area in the earth and throwing down stones is, um, uh, wasn't going <laughs> to, I wasn't going to, achieved much doing that. I knew there's there's a lot more to it than that. One of the first things Robert had to consider was the design of the patio he wanted. Um, I had an idea of what I wanted. I had already carved out a, an area where I was going to lay the, the um, pavers down. When the contractor came out, he had actually um, took my suggestion and expanded on it. He gave me some ideas on what color brick to put down. Choosing whether to build a deck or a patio deserves careful attention, as either can give you years of enjoyment if designed correctly. Patios work best on flatter terrain because you need a minimal amount of structural engineering to put them in. In general sense, as far as what products people are moving towards, um, paving stones for many years were more smaller formatted, uh, meaning size of the shape of the stones and so forth. Uh, you have very traditional looks that are used in historical areas like a 4 by 8 type brick or a paver. Those are now expanding out to larger format pieces where you can get pieces that are large as 24 by 36 for an individual uh, stone. So people are, seem to be trending more towards having larger formatted pieces in general. A patio can also be pretty low maintenance, Kevin says. Something as simple as a leaf blower can really help with upkeep. Basically, I tell people that, you know, the leaf blower is your best friend. Blowing off um, your pavers after mowing, especially if you have a side discharge mower that would blow grass clippings across or whatever, or just the common uh, seeds and leaves that end up falling throughout the week. Um, just blowing those off your pavers just to keep them fresh looking, um, not allowing that debris to start to accumulate in the joints and so forth. Um, but that's primarily it. Um, they're very low maintenance. But perhaps you're considering a deck instead. They can be installed over a variety of terrain. We can create a couple of different spaces with the deck, higher spaces, lower spaces, so it can really feel like separate areas. Also, we can put benches and privacy screens and railings, so it really can flesh out the space nicely. And when it comes to building a deck, there are many materials from which you can choose. A lot of those materials are very durable. About 80% of our decks are made with composite materials. And within the composite materials are actually three different types. There's a wood plastic composite, there is a PVC material, and then there's a capstock or a coated composite material and the coated composite is the highest performance material. That actually has a 25-year fade and stain warranty, so it's really popular. And depending on the deck you have, there may have to be some maintenance throughout the years. The most common repair is that uh, someone has actually put a paint on their deck floor, and so it starts, scra it starts peeling off, they can't get it to, to scrape off, and so it just becomes a big mess. So in that case, we'll come out and we'll change all the flooring out. That's the best thing to do. Just take it all off and change it out, even if it's just going to wood again. Sometimes we're asked to come in and put new rails on a deck just to update the look, because you can really change the look of a deck by, by just changing the rails. 
And now that you know what can go into a deck or patio, Angie says it's very important that you know what you want to spend before making the first move. When planning a deck or patio, first you want to get your budget in mind. Then you need to see what your options are, figure out how much square footage you're looking to add, and then price it out accordingly with each different type. Keeping in mind the price range can vary on installation, but you also need to consider what the lifelong maintenance is as well. Something else to consider, an incorrectly installed patio or deck can be an unsightly blight on your landscape. Angie List says it's critical to choose a licensed contractor and never sign a contract without reading the fine print. Tips to keep a smile on your face as you sit back and enjoy the summer sun. Now, before you build a deck or a patio, you're also going to want to look at the way weather is going to affect your property. You'll want to determine whether roof drainage could create a problem on an attached deck or if the way snow and ice build up could actually create a slippery hazard on a patio. And speaking of projects, she's slowly but surely looking more and more like her normal self. Up next on Del Marva Life, we're talking about the Skipjack Rosie Parks in St. Michael's. We have been following the ship's progress for more than a year now. Brian has the latest on this restoration project. Brian? Well, Jimmy and Lisa, we are at the Chesapeake Bay Maritime Museum. I'm standing right near the Skipjack Rosie Parks, but I don't want to show her to you just yet. I want it to be a surprise. When we come back, I'll show you what she looks like now and when she's expected to go back into the water. And a little bit later on, it's a seafood twist on tacos. We're in the kitchen with the Martin Fish Company in West Ocean City. We're going to find out how to dress up our tacos with clam strips. Hmm. But first, we've got a seat waiting for you in the Del Marva Life audience. Come be a part of the fun. Book your seat by visiting DelmarvaLife.com and clicking on the show tab. It's there on the left side of the main screen now. Or you can just call us, 443-880-9116. Del Marva Life, we'll be right back. 